Hi all, welcome to another video uh, from Mode 44, or my channel. Um, as always, if you could like and subscribe, if you haven't already subscribed, if you have, that's awesome, because um, it really does help. And, uh, and now that's out of the way, we'll, we'll crack on with, with the video today. So, in the last video uh, that I did, I spoke about the SSL TLS profile for the management of the, uh, of the device. Um, by default, it is, uh, we can see here, by default, we have the certificate which is issued by Palo Alto Networks, and so, thus, not trusted. Um, in just about every enterprise uh, I've ever worked in, uh, the, those environments, they tend to have their own CAs, and so you would you would get it signed by the CA, but I don't have one at the minute, which is a failing on my part, and I really probably should do that. Um, just to show that we, you can then get it signed by the CA, so it's then trusted by all the devices within your organization. However, today we're going to do a self-signed cert, and then we're going to add it to the SSL TLS profile. It's a really quick thing. It doesn't take very long at all, uh, and then we'll see that we can make that then trusted by the by the um, the browser. Uh, so, where can we use SSL TLS profile? So anywhere where the firewall is serving a page basically so if we have response pages we can use the SSL TLS um, service profile there um, for instance if we go to content ID and then go to the admin override um, we have an SSL TLS profile there because that's going to use that profile um, so basically anywhere where we're getting a page served from from the firewall um, again with global protect if we go to set up a portal, um, trying to find where I am now, so portal uh, authentication agent, ah, sorry, yeah, so on the authentication you've got um, the SSL TLS profile there, and then you've got certificate profiles as well, which are, um, there's something different, so the certificate profiles, when you look in, in those, the certificate profile is basically what am I going to use to to be sure that the the whatever I'm communicating with, so whether it be an EDL or something online or something like that, um, can I verify that this this certificate I'm receiving from this this device is is genuine? And you add the CA, so you can download the CA certificate, the root certificate for whatever service you are consuming, and then you can use the CRL or OCSP. Um, and then the CRL timeouts and so on. And then once you've gone through those, you've then got the uh, the actions here. So if the certificate status is unknown, we're going to block it. Um, certificate, certificate status cannot be retrieved in the timeout. We're going to block it. Block session if certificate was not issued to the authenticating device. So the device is authenticating with us. And then block sessions with expired certificates. So that's something different. That's people authenticating into us. Whereas the SSL TLS profiles is us um, authenticating our own um, our own identity. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the we're going to create the um, the root cert. So I'm going to call this firewall root, and this is going to be given the name if I can spell it. So we're going to give it the, the FQDN for this firewall. I'm going to say it is a certificate authority. And then we've got the uh, the algorithm and the settings underneath. So we go for like the highest we can go for. Um, we could go for 384, uh, 512. So expiration. So the expiration days now, we're going to go with 365 again. So browsers, I believe, I can't remember what the time was, but there was, there was a, a shift where browsers now don't, um, they're set to not trust anything that is valid for more than more than a year. Um, perhaps somebody can straighten me out on that if I'm right or wrong, but either way, 365 days. Okay, so we're going to give it some, some attributes as well. UK, organisation, 44 Limited. Um, and then we're going to give it a host name. 
the DNS, which is going to be the same as this, and that ensures that uh, we get we're seen as a valid certificate. Okay, so we're going to generate that. Okay. Now we need to, so now we've got our firewall root certificate, that's the one we're going to export onto, onto my device so that we can um, so that we can authenticate that. We're now going to generate the firewall cert itself for the SSL TLS. Okay, and that is going to be the SSL TLS and GMT. And then the common name that's going to appear on that, so we're going to do the, uh, the IP address of the firewall here. And it's going to be signed by the uh, sorry the firewall root. And it's difficult again. We're going to go for the strongest we can go for, and then we're going to have some attributes here as well. UK. Don't know what the difference is between UK, Great Britain, and UK, UK, United Kingdom. I don't know whether it's make any difference either way. Um, so, limited, and then the IP address is going to be 192.168.3.151. Okay, we're going to generate that. Okay, so now we have our certificates, um, and we've got the one for the, the management address, which is uh, 151. If we were to, if we were going to be using DNS to get to this, then you could put DNS in there, or you could put DNS at the top, and then the alternative, the 151. Okay, so now we're going to go to SSL TLS profile, and we're going to call this management profile because once again, I have absolutely no imagination. And we're going to go for our certificate, and there's there's a change here as well, and I'll just show you in a second as well. So there's a change where one uh, TLS v13 wasn't um, supported. As that software changed, it didn't get integrated into the SSL TLS service profile. So on some versions, there is a separate section for that within the management um, management configuration. But now. Uh, 1.3 is is supported through this, so we're going to go 1.3, and it automatically takes away all the all the uh, weak algorithms. I literally see no point. Some people they choose less. I mean, you you could end up with some kind of I I yeah, you could end up with an in, uh, an incompatibility, let's say, from certain browsers, but. I mean, frankly, today everybody uses Chrome. Everybody uses Chrome, and then they use Edge, which is a derivative of Chrome, and and so on. So, the chances of that are fairly slim. And of course, everything we do, everything we do in security, should be seen as we need to make it as secure as we possibly can. And if there's no reason to do anything else, you might as well. Right. So now we come back to the management and the the setup and the management, and then we go click on there, change that, and then we simply select our management profile. Okay, and then we commit. And when we commit that, once that's committed, we'll see that it tells us that it's going to restart the web server. So you'll have to uh, refresh your web page in order to get that new the new certificate and create a new connection. Okay, so now that's committed. And again, we can see at the bottom, not again at all, you haven't seen it before. So uh, we can also see that we've got the Web server will be restarted upon successful commit of this configuration. Please refresh your browser window. Okay, so that'll actually stop on 99. I won't go any further because this session is now is now uh, done. So we're gonna do that. We get another security warning because now obviously it's given us a different uh, different certificate. So the files like I've got no idea who the who the issue is. We'll accept the risk and continue. Okay, so the connection is not secure because it doesn't know the issuer. Go to more information, and then we can see now that if we view the certificates, we've got the certificates, um, the certificate chain as well. So the certificate here is the common name is one five one, which is our IP address, um, and the issuer name 
the validity, the IP, subject's alt names as we can see, the key size and everything that we chose, um, SHA-512, and then we can see the cert at the top, the, the local one, which is this is the firewall cert that signed the that signed it, um, signed the cert for us. Um, and there we go. So now, now all we need to do is we just need to import that, and uh, and then we should get a trusted uh, icon at the top. Okay, so now we've we've confirmed that we've got our certificate through. How do we make this this trust? This, as I say, we're going to do that now. So we need to export the root cert, and we're going to make that the trusted the trusted uh, entity. So we're going to export it from here. Don't need the the private key, so I can just export it as a PEM. Comes a download. Right, and now this is where I might be a little bit rusty, so bear with me. Uh, settings because. Firefox, I discovered through multiple issues of trying to get it to trust certificates, actually maintains its own um, certificate store. So what we're going to do is we're going to import it into here, into authorities. Okay, and then we've got the option to, uh, do we trust for the following purposes? Um, there's no email users, so we're not going to bother with that. We've already seen the certificates, so don't need to worry about that as well. And click OK and OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to restart um, the the Firefox really so that we can get because otherwise it might not work and that'd be really embarrassing and now we can see just going to log in now we can see that the connection is secure it's securely connected to the to the website and again that's the same thing I say it's it's you know there's uh, lots of places for SSL TLS anywhere that it's, it's serving that page you'll find that you've got that sort of authentication portal, that type of thing. Okay, so I'll just, uh, we'll just go through. So if we look at setup, and we can see on this one here that we've got just SSL TLS profile. So if we just look at another firewall, just quickly get another firewall up, and we'll have a look and, and we can see how it changed. Okay, so here's the, the London firewall, which is uh, an earlier version and we can see that we've got the management mode here so when you when you look into it so management tls mode this is basically what our tls service profile is so if we exclude tls 1.3 then the option for the ssl tls profile is it's usable however when you go to mix mode where tls3 might be required then you've got a separate certificate and ssl tls is grayed out and then if we go to uh, TLS v3 only, then you've got a certificate and that's greyed out. Also, if you look at the SSL TLS profile itself, when we go to add one, we can see that 1.3 is not available. Whereas if we come back here, we can see that within here, well, we know is because we just configured it, that 1.3 is is available there directly through there. If we are saying if we come back to here, it isn't. So that's really what the difference is. Um, I'm assuming as they incorporated it, as they moved it across, it became it became that that sort of thing of a, an arching or a bridging configuration. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful, uh, and I'll catch you in the next video.